Hello everyone. Uh, in today's session we will take a look into the uh, Azure Stack ATI with Grafana. It's a WSLAP scenario, so if you don't know what the scenario is, I'll just show you. My name is Jaromir, I'm a PFE in Microsoft and I'm from Czech Republic. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Dave uh, for having me here. Thank you Dave. So this is the, for the third time I'm here. I'm really glad uh, that I can present here because I, I, I think these tools can help a lot of people and I'm really passionate about this. So let me just show you uh, what you will learn here. So first of all, I, I want you to understand what the scenarios are. So in WSLAP, it's not only about a script that can do some machines. It's more or less about things you can do with these scripts and about the scenarios where I describe how to use PowerShell to do set up some to set up some infrastructure. In this case, we will set up Grafana and not only like install Grafana on one server, we will have multiple servers and we will even do it using like, a, I would say, best practices. On the left, you can see what will be deployed. You can see multiple servers here. We will walk it through. And on the right, there is a result. Result is a dashboard for your S2D cluster. You can then customize and you can scale however you want. So let me first talk about scenarios. Uh, if you'll navigate into the WS lab by just typing WS lab into your browser, into your search engine, the first link, hopefully, will be a GitHub page, where if you will navigate into the scenarios folder, as highlighted here on the screenshot, you will get into the folder where there has a lot of folders, and there has like a 50 folders, and each folder is a separate scenario. So let's take a look into this one, which is S2D and Grafana. Uh, you will basically start with uh, DC and your Azure Stack ETI infrastructure. This is basic WSLAP scenario. Uh, as a prerequisite, you will set up a uh, S2D hyperconverged scenario to have some infrastructure. I, I choose, I change there one parameter, which is uh, to use real virtual machines inside, not just fake ones. I will also set up one machine for the management, which will be Windows 10. And all management will be done from there. You will build the cluster from there, and you can also build entire Grafana scenario from here. You will then have a certification authority, Grafana and InfluxDB. So what you will set up, so there will be a telegraph agent that is sending data to InfluxDB. However, the telegraph agent is sending the data over TCP IP uh, on port 8086. I didn't uh, actually study how it's how it is doing. I didn't study if it's using plain text for sending the password to the database to authenticate to the database. Uh, I I don't really know. Therefore, I decided to uh, secure this with the IPsec, um, with the Windows firewall actually. So Windows firewall will be configured to accept connections only from S2D agents, uh, from S2D telegraph agent and also only from Grafana. And then I will be connecting uh, from management machine to the Grafana server on HTTPS. So then therefore you need to have a certificate. The certificate will be enrolled from certification authority and to authenticate you, we will use LDAP. However, the LDAP will be also secured with uh, LDAP S. So you will also need to have certificate in uh, DC. Therefore, that's why we have certification authority in here. So let's take a look what we actually have on my machine. All of this is running on my laptop here. So let's take a look in my Hyper-V manager. You can see I have several machines here. Um, you can just see that there's like S2D cluster with each node has four gigs of memory. It can be even less. I'm using nested virtualization. There are VMs running in there like in that are nested. So therefore I decided to choose the, the bigger version of the workshop, uh, sorry, of the machines where I have four gigs per each S3 node. Plus I also have management machine. These machines 
uh, are you know management is optional and these machines can have uh, dynamic me uh, memory and it can be much less uh, all of this deployment finished in eight minutes so you have this basic infrastructure in eight minutes you will then start all your machines you will then log into management machine and in this management machine what i did i run s2d cluster s2d hyperconverged scenario so basically i did uh, copy this script i got from the scenarios from ws lab it's s2d hyperconverged scenario and i pasted it into the powershell as a result in 37 minutes it's, it's somewhere between 30 and 37 minutes depending how your machine is uh, loaded you will get your s3 cluster fully configured with machines running and that's because i uh, choose that i will have real vms here as a parameter uh, it's uh, here real vms equals true it asked me for the parent image from parent disks i provided it uh, the parent disk uh, from uh, Windows Server 2016 and uh, when I create it using create parent disk script that you can find in the parent disks folder I uh, decided to build a nano server image which is really good because it's really small so for the lab environments you can run, run multiple machine and actually you can see this machine has memory demand around 235 megs which is really small so you can fit many machines like this okay there's one bit if you want to create these uh, parent disk, you can navigate to your parent disk folder and you can just run this script, create parent disk. You will provide it ISO file. And as a uh, result, you can have, for example, nano server or you can have even Windows 10 machine, Windows 10 uh, VHD. You can provide it, uh, uh, you can provide cumulative update and the cumulative update can be uh, downloaded with, with this tool, download latest CU. So if you'll just right click run with PowerShell, you will be asked for what version you would like to download. And then uh, you will have this folder with a cumulative update and servicing stack update. You can then provide to the create parent disk. So I have several additional disks. There is a nano server. I copy this nano server into the tools VHD and then I provided it uh, with the script because you can then find the tools uh, the, this VHD in the tools uh, disk in here. Okay, so this is my cluster. This is finished. Uh, then next step, what I did, I also installed Windows Admin Center. So this is from a scenario with Windows Admin Center. I just you know installed the desktop version. You can just download it and click next next. It's the same. This is just a three lines of code with some comments, and I have Windows Admin Center here. So I can see how my servers are, how are my volumes. And um, as you can see, uh, I have four volumes. It's almost empty. But this is like a fully functional cluster with all the virtual switches, uh, with, uh, with east-west uh, 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 network adapters for SMB01, SMB02, for SMB multi-channel as a set switch. Everything is here. Okay, so it looks like a real cluster. And now what we will do, we will set up this Grafana. I uh, went for the S2D um, uh, and Grafana scenario. I copied the scenario script in here, in the PowerShell ISE. Let me just quickly go into the IE, uh, into the edge. And uh, in here, I have a, I'm in WS Lab, in the scenarios, and in S2D and Grafana. There are a few uh, files that are important. One is actually lab config. This lab config defines what you will have in the lab. And if you'll copy these lines and paste it into your lab config in here, so actually you can compare it, this is exactly the same, then the machines that I have will be created. So basically, I modify this lab config, I run deploy PS1. I got my infrastructure like this and uh, then I logged in into the management machine and then pasted the scenario script for S3 hyperconvert. So I have now my S3 cluster configured. Um, then the next step would be to take a look into the scenario PS1. Um, I usually go and uh, select raw just to have plain text, copy everything and I paste it into my PowerShell ESC like this. Then I 
uh, then I press Ctrl plus M. This will collapse all regions, so now you can read it really in easier way. So the next step will be uh, that we will set up my infrastructure. I have empty servers, there are Windows servers, oh, everything is Windows Server and I like a Windows Server Core. You can see it like here, like this. But in TV, if I'll connect here, you will see it's pretty simple. It's just a Windows, um, it's, uh, it's Server Core. So what we will we will set it up from my management machine. I don't want to log in into any machine. I want to do everything remotely. So let me uh, make this full screen. Let me move PowerShell ISC with my scenario script to the right. I will uh, put my PowerShell window to the left and I will start running each region, region by region. I will copy just the region um, with Control plus C and I will paste it into my PowerShell window with a right click. Uh, this way I can read the code. I can read what is in the code without expanding the region or I can just expand the region. I can modify my variables. You can, for example, use this in your lab where you have different names for the machines and you can just, you know, uh, uh, choose whatever you want and just reuse it the same way as I'm doing here, but in your own lab or in even in the production. Uh, so this is variables where I define what will be installed where. So for example, what is my Grafana server name, what is my InfluxDB server name, where I would like to have my database and so on and so forth. Then I will use it in every other region. Um, and uh, this is the way I, you will basically follow it with me. I'll copy next region. Next region will copy files uh, from the internet. So as you can see, I'm just downloading uh, um, InfluxDB, Telegraph, and Grafana. I'm also downloading the really useful tool uh, with a cool name that will set up uh, executables uh, as a service. So Telegraph, uh, uh, actually InfluxDB and Grafana will be running as a service. So I just downloaded it. You can check it that it was downloaded into the downloads. You can uh, see all of this uh, purely in the code. So if you will just read this line, it will say, hey, just download it from this address and store it inside user profile in downloads folder. Okay, let's continue a little bit. You can also install Edge. However, since we are on Windows 10 machine, uh, we don't need to install Edge. If I would be running the same script from the DC, then there's only Internet Explorer, so Edge would be really useful. I will skip this one and I will just install management tools. Um, as you can see, there's some logic. Sometimes I include the logic in the script. As I said, um, the, these scripts are not for the automation. These scripts are more or less for the documentation. So if you just paste it into the server, you will see how I basically basically check if this machine where it's running is a server. And if it's a server, I install RSAT management tools. If uh, I'm uh, on the server core, I install a little bit less tools because they are not there is not everything. And if I'm on the client that is older than 1809, I'm checking for the KB, which is RSAT actually in a separate KB and if I'm on 18.09 and newer I'm checking for capabilities and actually installing the capabilities plus I'm also installing IS management tools. These are needed uh, because we will need to install and configure IS on um, certification authority. Okay so as you can see now it's installing all of these prerequisites um, there's one thing with IS management tools. I'm installing it with a DISM, so therefore root uh, feature needs to be enabled. Therefore, I'm after that, I'm, I'm installing the IS web server because I really don't want to have a web server. Uh, it's either you can click it manually, or you need to also install parent part parent feature plus. Then you need to remove it. Okay. Then uh, let's install certification authority. So so far, so far everything was hopefully clear. We just downloaded data, we just downloaded a few files into downloads, and we did install some management tools 
we will then use in the lab. Let's now install certification authority. There is a separate certification authority scenario, but this is almost the same. Basically, I'm I'm just setting up a certification authority as it should be. So I install IIS, I publish CRL there, I'm uh, publishing IR locations and all of these things. What I also do is I'm uh, providing there like configuration file, so the templates will not be the default templates will not be published because I I like it I like to publish my own templates. Um, uh, it's been now 15 minutes. Let me just quickly pause it. This will take around one minute, but we have only 30 minutes, so I'll pause the recording. Okay, so installation just finished. Uh, now I pressed continue recording. I will open up Server Manager just to show you that certification authority was installed. So I will add my service for management. Uh, certification authority should pop up here on the left. Active Directory Certificate Services. I will right click and say certification authority. It will open up a certificate authority MMC console. And we should be able to see that we have now um, everything in place. Mm, that'll take a little bit of time. Let me minimize this window. And um, let's check if we will have if we have any certificate templates here. There are no certificate templates, so we will publish uh, two. As I said in the PPTs. We will have to have uh, a template for the Grafana and also template for uh, uh, domain controller. Uh, let's check it. Now we should have two of them. So there is uh, one for the web server that is exportable. This is a key storage provider. And for domain controller, I'm, I need to use a legacy crypto security provider um, because I tried it with KSP, but it didn't work, so I had to fall back to legacy. You can see it in here in Manage, and um, you can check it how it looks like. And uh, here in Cryptography, you will see Key Storage Provider, while in uh, Domain Controller, Domain Controller, you will see uh, in Cryptography Legacy Cryptographic Service Provider. Okay, let's do next step. We need to. Uh, publish uh, these certificates to our machines. So I usually what I do with the code is I prepare it to recycle. So as you can see, um, I basically say that, okay, if you will modify this table with your other computers, you can type here as many computers as you want with template, uh, as many templates you want, and then use this code as I would say as a function to distribute uh, uh, your certificates to the machines. What it will actually do, it will set up uh, security on the template itself. So it will uh, be able to auto enroll to the machines and then it will uh, uh, invoke uh, certitude pools, uh, but it will also check if after certitude pools, the certificate is present. As you can see, it uh, took three pulses on the domain controller to uh, enroll the certificate. Okay, so now what we will do, we will we will need to uh, uh, set up the file and then uh, run LDFE to reload this file to uh, actually start using SSL for LDAPS. Let's, let's do it. It's pretty simple. It's just right click with the PowerShell and now uh, SSL is working um, on domain controller. And the next step would be to copy NSSM and InfluxDB and Grafana to servers. Let's do it. It's pretty simple. Let's take a look what's in the code. Um, in the code we will see that we just uh, create sessions to servers and just copy item to these remote servers. One thing I had to do is to increase max envelope size to be able to transfer these files. 
um, it's it I didn't have to do this on 2016 servers um, for some reason it's only on 2019 I, I didn't explore why this changed but it's kind of necessary then uh, um, next step will be to configure InfluxDB to use something else than program files so what I will do there is uh, one extra disk on InfluxDB server it's fresh there is no file system so what I will do I will first format it so I'll just find uh, the disk that where is the raw partition and format it and then I will create uh, some folders for database that are necessary and then I'll modify a uh, lab config, uh, config for influx db so there's influx db conf located under program files under influx db and I will basically switch here uh, this content for uh, a path to my folder um, there are some small things that you have to know like if you will set the content you need to use encoding utf8 otherwise it doesn't work so these small things make these scenarios really valuable because this is something you don't have to figure out you don't have to open it up with a no notepad remotely manually you will just you know use these scripts modify it a little bit because if you don't want to have it on the e drive you want to have it on the d drive it's just simply changing one letter okay um, let's uh, copy this um, We'll soon we'll have our files copied and probably uh, uh, probably not uh, copy, uh, installed just uh, extracted into the into the um, uh, program files I would say so the next step is to co configure InfluxDB to be running in a, a e drive I will for format the e drive uh, I will uh, create a folder structure and set the configuration files uh, for the new folder what I will do next is to configure uh, uh, these executables from Grafana and InfluxDB to be running under uh, service so I'm, I'm using NSSM with some arguments so this is actually configuring uh, InfluxDB uh, to be running as a service and then it will start this service so InfluxDB should be now running with the database on the E drive pretty simple so far hopefully right uh, so this was done uh, now I need to now I need to uh, secure the communication with the IPsec so let's try to figure out what's going actually what's actually going on so first of all you need to have um, a network security rule so there's a logic if this network security rule doesn't exist it will be enabled it will be created it needs to be created on all machines that are involved in ipsec so otherwise the ipsec rule will not will not work then i create the firewall rule for influx db uh, uh, inbound traffic next step will be to add uh, into this uh, into the very same rule I created I need to add computers that are allowed to use this uh, um, allowed to use this rule um, it's really a bit more complex you need to uh, set up SDDL string uh, but with this um, with this uh, uh, script it's pretty easy because I basically have a list of the servers in this influx DB authorized servers uh, so you can put there anything you want and you can do it similarly um, against whatever rule you want I already fig figured this for you then I will configure LDAP for Grafana this is really ugly script but it's what it's actually doing um, it will uh, create some LDAP user on AD I guess and then it will um, uh, modify the configuration file so there is uh, one region that will uh, configure LDAP uh, authentication um, and one that will modify LDAP TOML file so the logic is a little bit ugly but uh, if you open up the, uh, these two files manually you will understand what I actually what I did the next step will be to uh, secure LDAP uh, uh, to use SSL because by default it, it's not using it's using uh, uh, simple bind and this is something you don't want to use 
everything. So basically, I'm modifying LDAP tumult to use uh, to have uh, uh, to to use uh, root certification root certificate that I uh, request first from the certification authority, and then I create a file, and then I change port from three eight nine to six three six against my domain controllers. Then I will add a firewall rule to Grafana because I need to access uh, Grafana over HTTPS. And then the last step will be to push Telegraph agent to my S3 nodes. Okay. Oh, I did copy something I didn't want to. Okay, let me just copy these, this region. And uh, what this will do, it will download uh, Telegraph uh, configuration file, which is a uh, part of the scenario. Let me just show you. So there is a Telegraph conf, and there is also Telegraph PS1. Uh, what Telegraph PS1 is doing, it's collecting something you cannot collect with the Perfmon. You need to run some PowerShell script to create a JSON output file, and then basically pro, uh, push it into the local port where the uh, where the telegram telegraph is listening. So you collect some information here. Uh, for example, for cluster shared volume, and uh, you uh, then uh, create a JSON file, and then you will send it over to the local port where a Telegraph is listening, and this way you can collect all the data. This is pretty nice trick. Um, I don't remember the the guy's name, but this is actually coming from uh, Slack, from S2D Slack. So. Uh, it's it's pretty pretty amazing. Also, the dashboard that I will show you soon is uh, modified by uh, Martin Raschendorfer, who created this for his own environment, and we combine it with this script from this guy. I don't remember the name. I, I should take a note. And uh, this is really great where a community really works. That you merge all of this information together, and the result is amazing. Okay, so we have our agents installed. So now, moment of truth, we will open up the uh, uh, Edge and I'll now navigate to my Grafana server over HTTPS. So grafana.corp.contoso.com. We should see that. Uh, Certificates is here. It's actually from my Contoso root CA. It's trusted. I'll be able to log in with my lab admin credentials. So we should see that uh, uh, authentication works and it's now hopefully working over SSL to the domain controller. The next step we will do is that we will add our uh, influx DB server. It's uh, HTTP in flux DB on port 8086. And the database is Telegraph. And uh, let's save it and test it. So it looks like a data source is working. So the next step will be add adding a dashboard. What we will do, we will import it. And this dashboard is part of a WSLAP scenario. So let me just search for it. Here's a dashboard JSON. I will click to raw. Ah, come on. Now you should hear my laptop screaming. It's very noisy now. I will paste my JSON. And with this, we have our dashboard. Ah, looks amazing, doesn't it? Ah, we have no data here. Uh, I had the data, so maybe we will just need to wait a little bit because the PowerShell will need to run. However, as you can see, there's my S3 cluster. You can have uh, even multiple clusters. This is something which is in the Telegraph. 
configuration. And with this, it's uh, I'm out of the time. It's 30 minutes, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, ask me in Slack or just uh, ping me on Twitter. And uh, see you next time.